Hold one. Arm drag. Whoa! This is Brett screwed Brett. Oh, Who different. are you to, to, to doubt El Dandy? Because this guy's a serious professional. Brett screwed Brett. Hold two. Arm bar. Hey, get a nice shot of the brand new Mr. and Mrs. Hunter Hurst Helton. I hate you. I hate you. I hate your hat. I hate your t-shirts. I hate your wristbands. I hate your shoes. I hate your music. I hate the C-Nation. I hate everything that you stand for. So is rule. Yeah, they do. <laughs> Hole three. The Moss Covered. Three-handle family redundo. Live from the nation's capital in Washington, D.C., this is the RCWR Show with your host, Lee Sanders. And welcome, everyone. I hope everyone is having a wonderful evening. This is co-producer Tammy. You are listening to the RCWR Show, Tuesday Night Edition, Wrestling Report of the RCWR Show. And again, my name is co-producer Tammy, and we want to welcome you. want to let you know, of course, today is November the 14th. 2012, and the RCWR show will be beginning right now. I know it's going to begin right now. We already did the intro. <laughs> you didn't hear the intro? I heard. What do you mean? We, we're live now. Yeah. You're live now. Oh. And you, and well, you're wonderful. freaking people out. You're freaking people out because you said November 14th. You got them thinking they missed the whole damn day. As you can tell, folks, Lee is a little under the weather, and the substitute is a little off tonight. So <laughs> It's okay. It happens. Yeah, folks, I got a little bit of horse tonight in the voice, as you can tell. I am not doing too good. And uh, for those of you that might be listening to us for the very first time, I humbly apologize. I normally do not sound like this. I've been fighting this all day. I've been drinking plenty of tea. Um been trying to stay warm, coming down with a little flu bug. But uh, I wanted to do this show tonight. I was thinking about canceling, but with everything that we had saw on Raw this past Monday night, um, I wanted to do this show tonight. And um, I knew I couldn't fly solo because my voice, it comes and goes. So uh, co-producer um, Tammy is going to be uh, helping me out tonight. And um, all right, so Tammy... Let's talk about um, WWE Raw, and uh, yeah, Gigantic, I appreciate that, man, yeah. Um, Let's talk about WWE Raw. Um, So, I know you had saw bits and pieces of Raw Monday night, but as we were gearing up for the show, I know you had missed that one key segment that, when we were talking about it afterwards, it made you go... WTF, what did we just see right here? (laughs) And, uh, folks, I want to get into great detail about that in just a little bit. You're going to love what I have to say. I've been able to marinate on this for almost a full 24 hours. I've heard everybody's arguments, and I'm going to approach that segment. I don't even need to name it. You know the segment I'm talking about. We're going to talk about that segment from a WWE standpoint. And we're going to talk about the segment from a fan standpoint. And we're going to try to cover both sides. And I'm just going to give you my honest, clear-cut opinion of what we saw that night. In the meantime, we got the chat room. It's open up right now. And uh, you're more than welcome to jump in there. It's at blogtalkradio.com. Of course, you can interact with us during this episode on Twitter at uh, Infinity One Prod. Facebook at infinity one productions dot com. Um why you had to take the time to like our page. Uh really we do so much more, Tammy, than uh cover wrestling on our Facebook page. It's got a little bit of everything, a little something for everybody on there. Mm, that's so true. That's so true. 
Yeah, and of course, we're going to be opening up the phone lines in the later part of the show. Uh, again, for those of you that might be listening to us for the very first time or long-time listeners, do not be alarmed. I am the Black Avenger Lee. My voice is just its not really doing too good right now. I'm just a little under the weather. Just bear with me. We're going to try to pull through this, and hopefully, good night's rest. I'll be better. All right, so, Tammy, let's talk about WWE Raw. Let's kick it up from the very top. And this is just a little bit of an appetizer, folks. I want to just get the blah stuff out the way, and then we can really sink our teeth into the meat and potatoes of the matter. We saw the continuation of the John Cena, A.J. Lee, Vicky Guerrero, Dolph Ziggler whole storyline fiasco there where Vicky Guerrero is continuing her infatuation with the doctor of thugonomics or the former doctor of thugonomics, the C-Nation leader, John Cena, as she is just swearing all up and down that Cena and AJ have been in some type of a fraternizing relationship with one another. And we see Vicky Guerrero call out AJ Lee, and she pretty much wants for AJ to admit that she is, in fact, having some type of personal relationship with John Cena, promising that she's going to take care of everything else for AJ. What that means, I have no clue. But AJ, she's remaining firm. She's telling Vicky, look, there's nothing. Don't know what you're talking about. Really, don't know what the hell it is you're thinking, but... Whatever you're thinking, whatever so-called evidence you have, it's invalid. You got nothing. So we see Vicky Guerrero, as she did the previous weeks, rehashing the amount of supposed evidence that she has against AJ and Cena. Of course, that weak photograph image of them having dinner. And uh, I was one of our listeners that pointed it out. And it was actually even Dolph Ziggler that pointed it out later. John Cena having a romantic business dinner with AJ Lee and he's wearing a freaking t shirt. I mean, really go figure. <laughs> Get that well, he's actually of wearing he's actually wearing his is that what looked like his wrestling attire. You know, it did to look a dinner like date, really? Attire, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I don't uh, yeah, I don't consider that very much of, you know, a whole lot of evidence besides maybe they grabbed a bite to eat after a match or something. But honestly, that evidence is quite quite weak, you know, and it it, it just seems so, you know, just not even, it just seems like it's really just petty and, okay, you know, next, because the Evidence is weak, but mm-hmm. I will. What I will say is, it sounds to me like <laughs> Cena is certainly coming to the rescue of AJ every time something like this happens. That's a very valid point, and um, I couldn't agree with you more. Now, some of this new evidence that Vicky Guerrero had tried to bring into light, folks, was some series of voicemails that apparently she had somehow pulled from John Cena's answering machine. And the first voicemail message, and the voicemail message was all from AJ, and supposedly this is what she left on John Cena's voicemail. Voicemail number one, and I quote, Hey, John, I'm so conflicted right now, but I need to be honest with you before things go too far. What happened last night was a mistake. Voicemail number two, and I quote, it's me. We have to stop doing this. I want to stop, but when I see you, I lose control. Voicemail number three, I want to be very clear about this. You drive me crazy. We should be together. And, of course, we see A.J. Lee just standing there like, how the hell were you able to do that? What did you do? And as you said, Tammy, we see John Cena come right down to the rescue, as always. Mm-hmm. And we see AJ Lee. She tries to take control of the situation because we did see Dolph Ziggler there, and he was trying to throw in his little two cents. AJ slaps him in the face. John Cena throws a hook. 
And that was pretty much the end of that. You know, it was so funny interacting with people that were watching Raw Monday because so many people actually turned off Raw after this segment. A lot of the people that we were talking to, they sat up and they were like, you know what, man, this <laughs> this, this is just bullshit. This isn't, a, are... this isn't an episode of Cheaters. Yeah, I mean, they were like, why are we getting this shit? This is supposed to be about wrestling. I don't want to see this lame-ass storyline. You know, why Why are we being fed this? We're better than this. What happened to just straight-up wrestling on Raw? The answer to that question, it's now known as SmackDown, and uh, it's now known as the WWE main event, which has just been doing a phenomenal job. I've been watching that ever since it debuted. I mean, you really can't go wrong uh, with that. I'll I'll bring that up again in the later part of the show. I'm getting kind of sidetracked, but I think you guys would agree. Main event on Ion, SmackDown, hands down. You want to talk wrestling, those are your shows right there. But this segment, it was like you just couldn't wait for it to be over. I mean, I found myself with the remote control hitting the (laughs) fast-forward button, knowing I can rewind live TV in progress. I'm thinking... Maybe this is delayed, and I'm thinking maybe I could just fast-forward it, but I I had to sit through that, and uh, very painful it was. And, uh, of course, in another segment, and this is the meat and potatoes of the segment, it was the hype that was built up for about two, three weeks now, the return of the Memphis King, the return of WWE Hall of Famer Jerry the King Lawler, who had a very serious health scare nine weeks ago, Tammy, as he had that heart attack in Montreal, Canada, just right there commentating, just like he always does every single Monday night. And very scary, very eerie for everybody. We actually did lose Jerry Lawler. He was announced clinically dead, I believe, for, what, 15, 20 minutes, but... The great EMTs there in Montreal, they did not give up. They were relentless. They did everything they could to revive him, and they were successful. And we see Jim Ross, Michael Cole, they give a heartfelt welcome back to Jerry. Jerry receiving a huge ovation from the crowd. And we just see him have that moment with Jim Ross, and it was just a, for me, you know, going as far back as that little teenager, you know, being 13 years old in the 90s, you know, and just thinking about that history that Jim Ross, Jerry Lawler have, and just being with them all through the years of their commentating, really a great touching moment to see the two of them embracing a hug, but then even more icing on the cake was seeing Jerry Lawler, Michael Cole, forget about that whole little stupid rivalry that they had going on. Forget about how they would do their commentating on a weekly basis where Cole's the bad guy. He's saying all the messed up stuff. We got Michael Cole always sitting up, and he's favoring all the heels, kissing up to them. Jerry Lawler's always saying to Michael Cole, now, 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 don't go there, uh, uh, Cole. You know what you said was wrong. We see the two of them just go, you know what, F it. You know, this is real shit right here. They actually hug each other. (laughs) You know, they Mm -hmm. leave the ring, you know, and we got Jerry Lawler giving that emotional speech comparing himself to the late James Stewart's character in It's a Wonderful Life, one of my top three favorite movies. I've been watching that religiously every single Christmas holiday for at least 15 years. And I that's one of my top three movies that I watch around the Christmas holidays. Um, My number one is, of course, I want a Red Ryder movie. BB Gun, A Christmas Story, and uh, the other movie, not exactly a Christmas movie, but I just love it, Groundhog Day. Don't ask me why. I, I just like busting that out during the Christmas holidays. But we see Jerry Lawler comparing himself to that character from It's a Wonderful Life, not really realizing what it was that he had 
that until, you know, his world was almost taken away from him. He wasn't aware of how much support, how how much he was loved amongst friends and, and strangers and fans. And it really hit him close to home. And then we see the unthinkable happen. We see CM Punk interrupt this. And I'm saying to myself when I see this, holy freaking crap, great way to generate some mega heat. Yes, okay, I like this. Let's see where this goes. But then it went down a path that I just was not prepared for. As we saw the WWE champion, CM Punk, say, you know, Jerry, it's good that you weren't here in the ring when you were because if you were, quote, I'd have beat you to death. And then we see CM Punk go on this tirade of talking about how basically it was because of him that Jerry Lawler ended up in the state that he was in in the first place and then throwing more insult to injury, sitting up and telling the WWE Universe that, you know, hey, this guy might have been clinically dead for X amount of minutes. Those numbers don't mean nothing. You know what numbers do mean something my 356 days, I just surpassed Big Daddy Cool Diesel to sweet, okay? And, you know, you're, you're, you're feeling it. You know, you know, you don't like what CM Punk is saying, but you're sitting up here saying to yourself, okay, you know what? This is good. He's generating some mega heat. This is good. Let's stay with it, okay? How's this going to play out? Who's going to come out and interrupt CM Punk, because he's going into some uncharted territory here. Then we see what I think is just very tasteless. And uh, after I say this, Tammy, I want you to jump on in here. So I want to take a sip of this uh, this hot tea over here with some lemon. Um, we see Paul Heyman pretend to have a heart attack drop in the middle of the ring and we see CM Punk throwing up that X symbol and for those of us that have been watching wrestling long enough to know we you know we we looking up what is really going on behind the scenes and all that we all know when they throw that X symbol out that's usually a sign for okay this is not part of the script we need some real guys to come the fuck out here we got a situation here that's usually what it means when you see a wrestler throw the X sign up. No, it does not mean DX, okay? It means there's some shit going down. We need some help big time. Notice nobody comes out for Paul Heyman. As it turns out, Paul Heyman faking and CM Punk going, oh, my God, Heyman, I just saved your life. And, you know, we see Mick Foley come out, you know, of all the of all the people I could think of, you know, great job Mick Foley did coming out there, being that baby face, that top baby face coming out there, and almost kind of, you know, to what you had said, Tammy, right before we came on the air, CM Punk, shame on you. How dare you do this? How dare you mock this man? You know, Tammy, run with that for a bit. Well, when I when I saw the segment, you know, I – kind of felt like you did. I'm like, okay, oh, this is a really nice moment, you know, having him come back, great, you know, wonderful to see him back, I, you know, over the top as far as, you know, one of the better moments in WWE just because of such a medical emergency that he did have. Um, then, you know, seeing CM Punk come in, out, and then you're like, okay, you know, where is this going I can sort of see, you know, hmm, and then you just see him come out and completely bash Jerry the King Lawler and just continue to do so for five minutes, ten minutes, just bash. I mean, we understand that CM Punk is, you know, the heel here, but really that is not how you do it. You know, I think I would have appreciated it more if it had been scaled back just a little bit more. Now, 
on a wrestling standpoint, yes, I can see the point of where they're trying to take this. They're trying to say, okay, this is a real-life situation that we're trying to make fit into our script and to generate, like Lee said, some heat. But in a real-life standpoint, that should have never happened. That should have never happened. And, oh, this uh, fake heart attack that Paul Heyman um, went ahead and, and faked, and come on, they were doing, you know, chest compressions on the man before he was even not even laying on flat on the ground. I mean, come on. It was completely fake, and just I took it as a knock. And, I'm, you know, maybe that's not the way they meant it, but honestly, I took it as a knock at him. And on some of Jerry Lawler's facial expressions, he took it as a knock as well. And the second thing that really I just didn't think belonged in the show at all was the fact that they showed private footage of him actually in that medical emergency, actually clinically dead, been working on him, the paddles, whole nine yards. Didn't belong in the show. If you want to show something, maybe you show him on the stretcher when it first happened. Okay, fine. But I, I just didn't think it belonged there. I mean, personally, you know, that's just a bit much. Um, I didn't think that – I thought it was in very bad taste. And, you know, would have preferred that they scaled that segment back to, you know, you know, I don't, of course you're not going to sugarcoat it, but that's kind of how I feel on that subject. Oh, I, you know what? And I, I totally see where you're coming from, uh, you know, from a hundred percent, you know, standpoint, I see exactly where you're coming from. And, you know, you know, when I initially saw this segment, I had to say to myself, what exactly did I just see? And I ended up, after Raw was over, I ended up rewinding it because I was just in a state of shock. I'm like, what did we just see right here? Because this was downright tasteless. You know, I'm thinking about the WWE that has been put down our throats for the past couple of years now in this whole era of PG. And they're doing all these friendly things. They're doing the whole don't be a bully, be a star campaign, smack down your vote. Uh, they're doing this thing for the troops, and I mean, folks, let's not let's not forget about this now. This whole episode was themed around the great men and women that served in the armed forces and was also a great platform while they were honoring the men and women as uh, they use it as a platform to promote their 10th anniversary of um, um, WWE Salute to the Troops, that another special is going to be coming in December, and then they also use that as a platform to hype up the, what is it, Project Freedom that they're doing with mm -hmm. Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner, of course, folks, he's going to be in the new Superman movie, Man of Steel, coming out next year. Great A-list cast, for those of you that are not aware of it. I mean, hell, we got Lawrence Fishburne that's going to be Perry White. That should be interesting in itself. And, you know, they're doing all these things, all these good things. They just cut out a check to the Susan G. Coleman Foundation, what was it, like two weeks ago, for $1 million. And you do this freaking tasteless, god daggone thing. Yeah, it Monday was very, very tasteless. You know what? I actually, and I'm going to actually end up doing it tomorrow. I'm going to use my investigative reporting skills and I'm actually going to see if I can talk to a PR from the Susan G. Coleman Foundation because what I want to ask them right now is the following. Seeing WWE make fun of somebody that had a very serious condition, they had a heart attack and died, how do you feel about accepting WWE's $1 million check? Cha-ching. You know, how, how, how do you feel? That's exactly well. I mean, don't get me don't get me wrong. It's not quite like that, but I no, would no, 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 no. It is like that because you know how are you going to sit up. You know, because let, let's let's be for real. You're going to make fun of somebody having a heart attack, right? Well, let's take mm -hmm. it a step further. 
Why don't you make fun of somebody that has cancer? Let's not forget now, WWE has this checkered history from time to time, but I think what happened with Jerry Lawler, it kind of really takes the cake when you think about it. Now, Vince McMahon, he has a notorious reputation for having a very sick sense of rude, crude humor. Let's not forget when he had Zach Gowan in the WWE. Zach Gowan was a little bit before your time, Tammy, when you you know began watching WWE. Zach Gowan was like in the early 2000s. Phenomenal wrestler because of the fact that he was a one-legged athlete. Okay? He was able to do some phenomenal stuff in the ring. He would have lasted in the WWE longer, but he had a funky attitude problem in the backstage area that pissed off the veteran wrestlers because Gowan felt like the world should have been coming to him, and he quickly got put in his place. We see one of the most tasteless things. It's probably actually right up under there with Jerry Lawler, if not tied for number three. We see Vince McMahon. It was either Vince McMahon or Brock Lesnar. Somebody in the chat room will refresh my memory. But it was either Zach Gowan um, and Vince McMahon or it was Brock Lesnar. They ripped his prosthetic leg off and proceeded to beat the living crap out of him on live television. Okay? McMahon has one serious serious sense of crude humor, not to mention all the times that he's made fun of Jim Ross, especially when mm-hmm. Jim Ross had uh, his bell palsy, made fun of him. McMahon has made fun of the, um, I'm not saying this to be funny, but the uh, no, dwarf, the, the, the dwarf people, the, 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 the small people like Hornswoggle, he's made fun of folks like them. Um, I mean, you name it, Vince McMahon has gone there. So he really has a sick sense of humor that's just downright rude. Now, when you think about how far along WWE has come along, okay, you see all these good things that they're doing on a weekly basis. You see the episode that you got on Monday night, dedicated to the troops, men and women, we salute you. Oh, yes, blah, 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 you know, good thing that we're doing. WWE did this with the troops. WWE did that with the troops. Well, and on the same episode, right, on the same freaking episode that you have a bunch of men and women that are in uniform, in attendance, you make fun of somebody that had a heart attack, somebody that is looked upon as a wrestling icon, okay? That is just too far. It's like, McMahon, where is your sense of morale? When is enough enough? You know, if I was Jerry the King Lawler, and Jerry the King Lawler, as we all know, he he doesn't need the WWE. He is financially more than comfortable. He doesn't need them. You know, he does it because he wants to. But, you know, quite honestly, I, you know, I kind of, you know, it's a double-edged sword for me because I actually lost a little bit of respect for WWE that night, and I lost a little bit of respect for Jerry Lawler because I'm saying to myself, Jerry Lawler, dude, really, how could you let this storyline go through? You know, how could you let them mock something so serious? That happened to you. Yeah, it's good that you're okay now, man, but look at what had happened, you know, then. And, you know, how dare WWE for secretly having the camera still be live as this man was clinically dead, and they're actually showing these guys operating on him as soon as they take him as far as the freaking ambulance. You know? Totally unfreaking called for. You, and you know what? We didn't need to see that footage of Jerry Lawler. Tammy, you, you know this. Zed knows this as well. We had came across the video that had showed the medics coming to Jerry Lawler, and they put him on the stretcher, and they took him to the back. And I remember when uh, early on we had tried to show that video. We tried to retweet oh, it. Yes. And we caught heat. We caught heat mm-hmm. from people. They were like, dude. You guys usually have some great integrity. You guys usually don't show stuff like that. Why are you showing that? That's that's just too much. Nobody should really be seeing that. And I told him, I said, well, unfortunately, you got some people that think this is fake, and we're just trying to let it be known that, you know, it's it's not the real deal. At, at least what we're retweeting to you all 
is, you know, somewhat, you can't really see what's going on. And at least we didn't show you what WWE showed you Monday night, paramedics ripping his shirt off, getting on top of him, and going, uh, 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 you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, absolutely. You know, and, you know, we didn't need to see all that that they had showed on Monday night. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, quite honestly, you know, if, if I was Jerry Lawler, I don't know, man. I would have sat up and I would have been like, you know what, if you guys are really going to go down this avenue, this is how you're going to try to hype up my return by making fun of it as yeah, making fun of a health status that I was in. I don't know, man. Maybe maybe you and me should be done. I don't think I'll be coming back to the WWE. WWE champion CM Punk. I mean, WTF, man. You know, did you really need that moment? to make fun of somebody that had a heart attack, you know? I know all these guys, when it's all said and done, they all are operating to the beat of the drum known as Vince McMahon. He's the one that is sailing the ship. But if we got guys like WWE champion CM Punk and a few others that are going to the face of McMahon, letting him know when, hey, man, Raw freaking sucks. The writing sucks. This sucks. There needs to be change. This should happen. Where the... WTF were folks sitting up saying to McMahon leading up into Monday Night Raw, hey, man, we really shouldn't go down this avenue. It's probably going to piss off a lot of people. Right. You know, exactly. You know, where were those people who basically should have been the voice of reason and say, this is too far? This is way too far. You know, whether it be, you know, Jerry Lawler, who is the subject of, you know, what they're showing, and or, you know, are they kind of like CM Punk, uh, you know, alluded to a year and a half ago, you know, the the ones who are afraid to, to tell anything to Vince McMahon. Mm-hmm. But... All in all, you know, I, I will commend Mick Foley for coming out and really sticking it to CM Punk because his comeback was really on point. It it was all it was on point, you know. It it kind of it kind of took your mind from what you saw, but you know, you, you, in retrospect. You know, you're still kind of like, what do we just see? And, you know, I, I hope I'm saying something new right here, what I'm getting ready to say. I know we got some folks, they like to do their rounds and check out, you know, different wrestling radio shows. And, you know, you know, we try to be very original over here. There used to be a time where I would listen to a few wrestling radio shows of my own um, on a religious basis. And, you know, nowadays I, I can't do it anymore because, you know, I want to try to be as original as possible. So I, like, refuse to listen. But I, I will pop up in chat rooms and, 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 you know, I show some love, you know, to the guys, you know, whose shows I have checked out as I'm friends with a few people. And, you know, one of the things that jumped out at me as I was seeing all this, and I hope this is new for you guys hearing this because I, I did I seriously did some thinking on this on my own not influenced in any type of way. And the thinking that I had was, you know what, I wonder if this is possibly Vince McMahon's way of lashing out. Just think about it. You know, for a good amount of years now, WWE has just stayed that route of PG. They've tried to be very friendly. They've tried to provide somewhat, you know, quality type of television that doesn't really come across those FCC borderlines and all that other good stuff that doesn't really get them in trouble with the network and all that. And I'm just saying to myself, I wonder if what had happened last Monday was a one-two punch combination. I wonder if, one, Vince McMahon was lashing out because of Linda McMahon losing that Senate race, thus losing 90, uh, uh, correction, $100 million dollars. And for those of you that have been wondering what's been going on with those WrestleMania tickets, you guys now know that the cheapest WrestleMania tickets that you would be able to get are like four hundred freaking dollars, and those are in the nosebleed sections. Okay, no pull. Those are like in the nosebleed sections. Okay, and they want four hundred dollars a pop. Okay. So you just thinking about all those things, thinking about Linda losing and everything, you just kind of wonder, was this 
maybe part of Vince McMahon's way of lashing out his frustration and also the desperation of a man who is trying very hard to bring in ratings as best as he can. Uh, unfortunately, I I can understand the dilemma, but it's still too far. It's still too far. Oh, no, I'm not condoning it. I'm not condoning it. I'm just saying. I wonder, you know, because you you just kind of think about the the pattern here, you know, and it's kind of like, hmm, I I wonder, you know, because it it, it really... I think, honestly, if, if anything, it could be a combination of those two things, plus what you just stated with the kind of that not so great sense of humor, you know, that sick sense of humor that you were talking about. I have a feeling that it's geared more towards that because it's not like this This is the first time it's happened. I so saw, I have a feeling that it's maybe a combination of, of a few things. I saw Zed say a very interesting thing on Twitter, and I want to reiterate what he had said. Uh, and I, I think what he said really nailed it, which was, Vince McMahon, what's next? Um, you know, are you going to have WWE cameras backstage filming your granddaughter? Should she go into some type of a seizure and she collapses on the ground and she needs to be attended to? You're going to try to film that? You're, you're going to try to make an episode of Raw built around that? When is enough enough? That's you know? You know, that's that's the question. When is enough enough, and at what point will you say enough is enough and stop? You know, I mean, grant you, you they are your wrestlers. They are they are under contract to you, but they are also human beings, and they all have their own lives outside of the WWE. This this so reminds me, and I've told the story before. It's one of my favorite wrestling stories. I love to tell, but. Um, it reminds me so much of the Von Erichs. It reminds me of what had happened with, uh, with I believe, Franz Von Erich, and he was trying to put that jump start back into the rivalry with the Von Erichs and the Freebirds, although now, at this point, he didn't have Michael P.F. Hayes because Hayes had left, so he really was trying to make something out of nothing and with all the tragedy that had happened in the Von Eric family prior as he had lost, I believe at that point, two of his sons, he tried to sit up and he tried to fake a heart attack and everybody was like, Oh no, not friends. What you know, what what's what's going on? Oh no and then when it turned out it was fake, he met so much freaking backlash that it was really ridiculous and he actually had to apologize. Um, when, you know, it just became too much. And, you know, I just wonder if possibly WWE within this week, if WWE Chairman Vince McMahon, if he, from a PR standpoint, might jump out there and say, hey, you know, we may have offended those of you that saw Raw this past Monday night mocking fun of Jerry Lawler's heart attack. You know, you know if we offended you, you know, we deeply apologize You know, it's something that, you know, we won't do ever again, you know. I mean, I'm just thinking, you know, I'm trying to think, you know, I'm not not a parent. But, you know, I got to admit to you guys, and I think a lot of you guys, especially, you know, if you're 30 plus, mid-20, 30 plus, I think you guys can agree. If you were with your kid in that arena and you saw that happen, you know, and you got that five-year-old in your hands, you know, you probably might look at that scene and say, you know what? Damn, that was really tasteless. You know, hey, man, let's go grab a burger. What do you say? You want to go get a Happy Meal? You know, I don't know about you, Tammy, but that's exactly what I would have did. Well, I tell you what, it was certainly apparent by the distaste that you saw on a lot of the people's faces, a lot of the fans' faces that were in attendance that night. You know, they they were pretty much as appalled as as us. Mm-hmm. You know about the segment. I mean, you could see just jaws drop. Yeah. I mean, not even. Ju- I mean, just drop. And you and know, and like folks, I cannot believe that they just said that. And folks, I want to put a name. I want to put a name out there. It's a name that 
I think for probably the first time or maybe just a hand few a time hand few times over here uh we haven't really said his name too much, but this name in his heyday it it carried some significant weight, and uh we gotta show some love to Jerry Jarrett, that's right, son of Jeff Jarrett, one of the co founders of t n a wrestling, and he was one of Jerry Lawler's former business partners. Now, he took great offense to that segment, and here's exactly what he said about the ordeal. And I quote, Watch WWE last night. Jerry Lawler was returning after surviving a life-threatening heart attack. I sat watching the television with a feeling of pride that they were honoring the return of such a great wrestler. I sat thinking, now this is real class. Just when I was appreciating the class WWE was showing, it ended suddenly with a juvenile cheap heat angle. I turned the television off and started thinking about Linda McMahon's hard work and great expense running for the Senate. It is exactly this kind of programming that prevented her from becoming a senator. Wrestling should have some limits and boundaries. If you offend great portions of the audience, it is a bad angle. I agree. That it can't. It, that's that's hitting the nail right on the head. It, there's really no more to be said. That is a that is a put that money order under the booth. Put that stamp on it so you can go cash it. Head on, that's just <clears throat> home run right there, what he said. Mm-hmm. Couldn't agree with that more. How the exactly. blue, can we can we curse? It's not even mid, you know, I feel like throwing an <laughs> F-bomb <laughs> anyway. Okay, how in the blue fuck is Linda McMahon supposed to be able to become a senator when you got stuff like this happening? Seriously. That is why she distanced, her, distanced herself from it. You know, it seems like the only McMahon that has really been successful outside of WWE wanting to do their own thing, shockingly, surprisingly, has been Shane O'Mac. Mm-hmm. Shane O'Mac, he got he he got to that point where he got tired of it. He figured that hey, you know what, Big Daddy Vince, he's not gonna give me the empire. I'm gonna have to make my own mark somewhere. And he has been doing one hell of a job. He has not come back. To the WWE And mm-hmm. it's been a good minute Now what Guys in the chat room What's it been now for Shane O'Mac About five years now Maybe six I know it for sure At least five years Since we've seen Shane in the WWE You know That that says a, That's a powerful statement right there And he's not being ridiculed For his past affiliation uh, With the company You know But trust me I'm actually going to be calling up The Susan G. Coleman Foundation and I am going to try to see if I can talk to one of their PR representatives. And uh, I'm going to ask them, hey, with what happened on Raw, do you guys regret taking that million-dollar check? Do you now find yourself in a position where from here on out you're not going to do business with the WWE again? You know, what's your take on what happened? I'm very, very curious what they have to say about that. And, of course, we want to get you all's opinion on this as well. Uh, You know, we heard quite a bit from you guys that were interacting with us on Twitter and Facebook, and we do appreciate that. But, of course, when we open up those phone lines, we definitely really want to be able to continue that conversation and hear what you guys have to say about that angle. And, uh, you know, in either case, WWE Raw, you know, uh, once you get past that storyline, you know, the three hours that it was on – it was actually some pretty good, solid um, matches that we had got uh, for tonight. Just a quick rundown for the card. And I see we got a lot of people that want to chime in their thoughts on this. I will definitely get to you all's calls. I'm actually just going to do a quick rundown of the card tonight. So it's not going to be as lengthy as it usually is. Let's run right through it. Matches um, that we had saw on Raw, of course, we had got a double dose of tag team action, which was really, for me, Tammy, one of the greatest highlights of the night mm-hmm. for Raw, as we had got to see the team of Sin Cara, Rey Mysterio, Justin Gabriel, Tyson Kidd take on the primetime uh, players, uh, and Primo and Epico, and a really great four-on-four 
tag match, we did see the team of um, – there's all those names you're trying to remember. We actually <laughs> saw the team of Rey Mysterio, Sin Cara, mm-hmm. Justin Gabriel, Tyson Kidd pick up the victory. Try saying mm-hmm. all those names ten times fast. You are just not going to be able to pull that off. You guys are lucky I was able to remember that off the top of my head. Great tag team match right there. That was probably one of – and I'm not – overshooting this, folks. For me personally, as long as I've been watching the WWE Tag Division this calendar year, that match, 4-on-4, this past Monday, hands down, one of the best tag matches all year. If that's not number one, it's a damn close tie to it. That was really a phenomenal match. For those of you that might not have been able to check out Raw this past Monday night, highly recommend that you look that match up on YouTube. You'll really enjoy it. You'll thank me later. Of course, other tag team action that we had saw from Raw this past Monday night, we had saw the team of Road Scholars take on Kane and a partner that was chosen by you as WWE had another Raw active poll where your choices were Zack Ryder, Santino Morella, and then later on it would be the Miz that would be added to the ballot, as Miz had a few words with Mick Foley in a mixed stage segment saying to him, hey, look, you know, I'm not on the Survivor Series card, and I really think that your team could really use my ability. Just think about it. You always talk about being original, being innovative. Hey, we don't like each other. That's what will make this even more cooler. Put me on the team so I can shut up Dolph Ziggler And Foley says, okay, you're on the ballot. Don't know how much of a shot you got, but you're on the ballot. Miz wins with 60% of the votes, and he is the tag partner for Kane. And they were very successful in defeating Team Road Scholars, despite the acts of Goatface Daniel Bryan coming in there, being a little sore that he has to share his big red monster. (laughs) (laughs) That's so sad. Yes, play nice boys. That's, but that's they so, weren't doing any of that. That's so sounded wrong. He had to share his big red monster. <laughs> oh God, that was funny. Moving right along, folks. We also had got to see Randy Orton in action as he had took on Dolph Ziggler. That was another good match. But really, those two tag matches I just said, my God, those really were the matches of the night for Raw. Alberto Del Rio would end up teaming with Dolph Ziggler in another tag match. So here you go again. You have another tag match. Now, you guys are probably saying to yourself, wait a minute, Lee. You just said Randy Orton had defeated Dolph Ziggler. What what exactly had happened right here? Well, I'll tell you what had happened. We had saw the acts of one uh, Alberto Del Rio uh, and uh, Ricardo. They had tried to play a little bit of interference in Randy Orton's match against Dolph Ziggler. Now, once Randy Orton was able to pick up the victory post-match, we saw Alberto Del Rio, Ricardo, Dolph Ziggler, they jumped on Randy Orton. Kofi Kingston came out to even the odds, and as a result of that, the match actually uh, became a tag match. So Alberto Del Rio, Dolph Ziggler took on Kofi Kingston, Randy Orton. The team of Del Rio and Ziggler would defeat Kingston and Orton. Also, we had got to see Big Show defeat William Regal. A lot of props for William Regal. He went in there. Big Show has just been really, I don't know how some of you guys feel, but Big Show has really just been putting out a good streak of good quality matches within recent weeks and though it was brief with William Regal I mean he really tore that guy up I mean he went through that guy like a piece of bread a loaf of bread at Thanksgiving I mean he just tore in the William Regal it was quite funny what he did to him we also had got a number one contender's Match for the Divas Championship where Caitlyn had defeated Layla to become the new number one contender. So Caitlyn will be taking on Divas Champion Eve at this Sunday Survivor Series pay per view. Also, we had got to see R Truth in action as he had defeated Tensai. 
my hot album, but Mighty Have Fallen, Tensai, who used mm-hmm. to be one of the top big guys. I was watching this match. I know you had saw a little bit of this because we were making fun of uh, Antonio Cesaro there. And uh, our truth just out of nowhere, being able to beat up Big Giant Bernard, I'm like, wow, Tensai, what the hell happened? It's so funny, too, because... <laughs> I don't know if you guys had saw the article like last month or a month and a half ago, but WWE, they had put up this article bashing the hell out of Lord Tenzai, saying how he was one of the most dominant guys, dominant forces in WWE, but quickly shot down the ranks to become basically a big disappointment. And then they kind of retracted it and edited it because they realized they were trashing somebody who they felt really needed to kind of look high upon, so they edited the article, and then they, you know, tried to clean it up, and they took all that stuff, you know, burying him and all that, but too late, the damage is done, this guy has really fallen since he's popped up in the WWE, I mean, he was up that mountain, I mean, man, he went from defeating John Cena to losing to Mm -hmm. (laughs) R-Truth. Yeah, I actually uh, had that same thought about, you know... What's next, Tensai? You're going to lose the Hornswoggle? Oh, Lord. Are you kidding? <laughs> All he would have to do, the Hornswoggle, just sit on him. Where'd he go? I don't know. Mm-mm. Let me tell you something. Hornswoggle would be able to uh, to beat Lord Tensai. All he's got to do, uh, I think you just said it. I might be saying the same damn thing. All he's got to do is sit on him. I mean, Hornswoggle's got a big ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's got to do. <laughs> Just sit on him. <laughs> he matches <is> over. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's something that all the all the ladies say. Even even a few guys say it. Hell, I say it, but mainly the ladies. They say, "Oh, that horn swaggle. Oh, he's so cute. Oh, he's got a big hat." <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. <sighs> Other matches that we had saw for tonight, folks, we had saw, of course, we we can't end Raw without talking about these last few matches that came up. Ryback defeating Maddox. Now, Tammy, I know you were watching this match because we were talking about it over the phone. And uh, we were like, wait a minute. Okay, so we see EMTs come out. We see the stretcher come out. We see an ambulance truck come out, what was supposed to be a singles match, where if Maddox won, he got a million-dollar contract. It actually turned out on the DL, shh, this match ended up becoming an ambulance match. And we just see Maddox, like, just get freaking squashed. I mean, he just was like, okay, well, if this is how it has to be, Okay, and I mean, he just got, God, as as my friend used to say. My he got mugged. That, yeah, yeah, my friend TJ used to say it best when he was playing Gears of War. He said, man, you got raped. <laughs> he got mugged. I mean, he really, th- this match was kind of like his, I don't know, he came out looking like, okay, very strong. You know, I, I kind of can see myself, whatever. Then he saw the ambulance come out, and I swear he freaked the fuck out and was like, <laughs> Ali, talking about, uh, you can't see me, you know, and just skipping around, uh, skipping around the, um, the ring, and then acting like he was, you know, scared, scared to death. And then yeah. he considered, yeah. you know, basically ended up just getting a beatdown because that was pretty much all it was. It wasn't any. I mean, he didn't even try to fight or counter. Nothing. I mean, the man was taking his head and bashing it into the ring. I mean, it's it's a wonder he, you know, knew where he even was. <laughs> it really, it really is. It really is. And I mean, that match, you know, not to talk about it any longer, folks, because there really wasn't anything you could take from that match. I mean, it was pretty much right back came, right back saw. Ryback got fed, Ryback went backstage. That was pretty much the whole freaking match. And, of course, leading up to that match, um, we did see Paul Heyman catch up with Maddox in a backstage segment, and he told him, hey, we need to talk. Come walk with me. So a little weird there that, 
you know, you see Heyman walk up to Maddox, and then you see Maddox just basically pull a uh, Kevin Nash versus Hulk Hogan in WCW there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're like, okay. One thing I can tell you guys, from what we've been able to gather so far, and it actually looks to be legit, Unfortunately, we are not done with Maddox. Um, Triple H is said to be very high on him. Triple H is looking to take him under his wing and kind of make that be a little pet project of his own. What we're kind of hearing over here is that Maddox might be getting some type of a semi-push in early 2013. I don't know if I see all that. I need to see a little bit more here, but... um, you know, hey, um, I don't know. I don't know. But that's that's Brad Maddox, folks. Uh, take that however you want to take that. All right, other matches that we had saw, which really wasn't that many more, immediately after that. And, Tammy, I know you and me were like, WTF. Immediately after, Ryback just destroys Maddox. We see Sheamus destroy David Otunga. Now, for me, I'm looking – at Raw at this point, I'm like, okay, you just gave us two squash matches. What was the blue point of giving us these matches? What was the point of having these guys come out if it was just going to be squash matches? I mean, okay, if you're going to do Ryback and Maddox like that, okay, all right, you're creating a little bit of storytelling. But come on, man, Sheamus and Otunga, really? Really? That's You know, this guy used to be like almost a serious threat to the United States champion, uh, Santino Morella. I mean, he was having some really great, solid matches with him. So he goes from that to just all of a sudden he can't last, he can't hang that long with Sheamus. Yeah, one bro kick and he was out. Um, Exactly. Honestly, those to me look like filler matches. They look like, okay, well, we don't know what else to do, so let's put that in there. You know, they were very weak, very weak. And honestly, it was kind of like, okay, well, it's time to go grab a soda, take a pee break. You know, it it just wasn't interesting at all. And and it made it, um, you know, the overall experience, like, what the hell? Of course, the main event match, love them or hate them, you got to love it when John Cena, when, uh, whenever he locks it up with CM Punk, they did have one phenomenal match, and I was glad that a good amount of time was put on that match. Uh, shades of what they did in yesteryears, I was really loving it. Seems like whenever John Cena hooks up with CM Punk, just a, seems like John Cena always tries to go that extra mile with Punk, and I like that. These two had another classic match. We actually saw CM Punk. Uh, lose to John Cena And uh, this was funny Because we saw CM Punk At one point He left the ring And he just was like You know what I'm just going to hang on Until Sunday I don't need all this And we see Ryback come out And CM Punk's like Oh snap And he's not really sure Which way to go So he tries to take off Into the crowd But Cena was able to grab him to, uh, put him back in the ring And attitude adjustment Later John Cena wins the match Of course The big payoff at the end And it's so funny because so many people are using that image now But that that final scene Of Raw You see right back John Cena They're just looking at each other head to head You just get those goosebumps All over Chills because you're thinking of Hulk Hogan Ultimate Warrior you know, that ultimate match there, and you're like, "Uh uh-oh, these two guys, oh, man, here it is. They both reach for the WWE title, and it's kind of like, mine, mine. And then just to see CL Punk, you know, he reminded me (laughs) of my nephew, you know, mine, give it, mine. (laughs) (laughs) But the funny part was... When he was all right, he was getting ready to take it from <laughs> Cena. But when he saw that Ryback had the other end, it's like, oh, you can have it. I, I don't really need it. It's, it's quite all right. 
Now that was funny. <laughs> it was. It was. You know, the only thing that was missing from that, and once I put this out there, somebody on Photoshop is probably going to hook it up. Uh, somebody with Photoshop, that is, is probably going to hook it up. The only thing that was missing from that whole trio image was a bib around CM Punk's head, <laughs> a pacifier. You know, you already got the crib right there because he's holding on to the ropes. So, you know, uh, you could just put him in John Cena little pajamas and, you know, you could just have him be like, mine, you know, that that, that just would have made that image just so perfect. Watch somebody's going to have that out probably before the week is out. But overall, Actually, I would love to see that image if somebody were to create it. That look, is too look, funny. Look, for you guys that's listening to the show, if you end up making that image, we're working on it right now. We will give you our early Christmas present. We'll give you one of our new RCWR shirts, um, new design that we've been working on. We'll hook you up with it if you end up making it. Don't throw any old damn thing together. Make it look as professional as possible. But, you know, because we want to we want to retweet that. You know, let's see if we can get that happening. CM Punk, put a bib, get a pacifier in his mouth. Wah, wah, wah. Let's see what can happen. Overall, Strong episode of WWE Raw. I want to mention this, then we're going to take a break, and we're going to open up the phone lines. We're going to immediately open up the phone lines after we take our break. I want to talk about the Raw ratings real quick. And Raw, you know, uh, for an episode that might have been surrounded with a little bit of controversy, as that Prince song goes, this past Monday night's Raw has scored a 2.94 rating with 4.193 million viewers. Now, this is up from last Monday's Raw that had got a 2.76 rating with 4.76 million viewers. It's also up from the October 29th episode. That one had got a 2.94 rating as well, but notice the viewership here. It's 4.102 million viewers. So this episode... Squash the last two Raws, not not too bad as they are going into Survivor Series Sunday. All right, so we're going to take a very brief commercial break right now, and as you can tell, my voice is back in full effect, which is good. We'll see how long it lasts. Co-producer Tammy's going to stick around a little bit longer, make sure I don't go all like this again. We'll see what happens. Now that I've made fun of myself, it's probably actually going to happen for real during commercial break. Um, we'll uh, take a commercial. We'll come right back. You guys that have been patiently waiting, we got you covered. As soon as we come back from commercial, we're going to take your calls immediately. Um, For those of you that are listening live right now and on the downloads, we're getting ready to play some rock music for you guys. For those of you that are going to be checking this out on YouTube, you unfortunately won't be able to get that due to copyright restraints. So a little bit of goodies for our live listeners here. And the song selection for tonight is one of my favorite songs. It's called Beautiful Destroyer, and it's from Comes With The Fall. Now, if that band sounds familiar to you, the lead singer of the group named William Duvall, he is now the lead singer of Seattle Grunge's Alice and Chains. Again, this is called Beautiful Destroyer, and it is from Comes With The Fall. It is from their uh, last album uh, that they had did. I believe it's called Beyond the Last Light. came out in 2007. Really great album. Highly recommend you pick it up. You'll love their stuff. You'll thank me later. Uh, Meanwhile, here you go. Beautiful Destroyer. We'll come right back. Take your calls. Hey, guys. The Black Avenger, Lee Sanders here. And I just wanted to take this time out to thank you for checking out this episode tonight. And, you know, if you liked what you had heard tonight and you want more, then be sure to check us out every single Tuesday night at 11 p.m. Eastern right here on this website at blogtalkradio.com also on our sister website at infinity1productions.com where every single week you'll be able 
able to get that wrestling fix as we'll give you guys the latest fallout from Monday's WWE Raw. Share with you the reviews, honest analysis, no BS, no fluff, just what you want when you need it most. And we'll also get you guys caught up on the very latest in WWE wrestling related headlines and so much more. And the best part about all this is that every single week we will be sharing with you all live fan reactions as we want to hear from you whether it is in our active chat room or you're interacting with us as we are live in progress by hitting us up on Twitter at infinity one prod Facebook at infinity one productions.com we give you the necessary tools that's necessary to be able to interact with us each and every single week for those of you that like to call into the show hey guess what you'll be able to do that as well this is the show that is for you the wrestling fans to be able to share your thoughts your reactions your likes dislikes to what you had saw from raw this past monday night or whatever's got you talking as far as wrestling related news so be sure to check us out every single tuesday night as it's our tuesday night wrestling report edition of the rcwr show at 11 p.m eastern right here on blog talk radio Dot com slash the RCWR show and at our sister website at infinity one productions.com. Hey, you're gonna miss our episode that's live in progress, won't be able to catch up with it until later. That's not a problem. Check us out on the downloads in the iTunes, Zoom marketplaces, also on Stitcher, just by using the keywords the RCWR show. That's from the DVL label. That album had came out back in 2007. And as I said, the lead singer that you had heard there uh, is none other than, um, come on now, say it with me, William Duvall. Of course, he is the new singer now for Alice in Chains, replacing former lead singer Lane Staley, who unfortunately had passed away from complications and uh those drug addictions that uh, he was having there with heroin and all that uh, years back. You know, he's been doing the band uh, just as a lot of people. They were on the fence uh, about him replacing Lane Staley. And uh, quite honestly, he's actually done the band uh, justice. And the fact that he's a brother on top of that, I I, I like that. I don't know about you, Tanya, but, that, you know, I, I like that. You know, you get a replacement, and it also turns out to be a brother that actually knows how to sing and he knows how to play guitar if you like comes with the fall check out their stuff they don't really have that many albums out they really weren't together that long pretty much when jerry cantrell guitarist from alice in chains had uh hooked up with the wall because he was actually doing some stuff for jerry during his solo tour for his respected albums they had grew a uh, great friendship and the chemistry was just going back and forth, and eventually Jerry was like, you know what, we're thinking about reforming Alice in Chains. Why don't you come on in? So pretty much William had kind of dropped, if you will, comes with the fall, and uh, he hasn't gone back to it since, although there has been some rumblings of maybe they might be working on not new material, but they might be working on some compilation stuff or what have you. To my knowledge, they got about four studio albums 
that's out right now. That includes a EP. So you're more than welcome to check that out. You'll be able to get all those without any problem uh, in the iTunes store. But I think the live album uh, that they had did, that might give you a little bit of a hard time. I don't think you'll be able to get that in the iTunes store. Some of them are kind of scarce, but you should be able to get the studio albums in iTunes, Zoom marketplaces without any problems. Just a little FYI. All right. Not every day we play rock music over here, so I was just filling in that mode, give you guys a little something for listening. Damn it. Let's have at it. Let's open up the phone lines. All right. So the way I want to do this, I want to start with the people that have been waiting patiently for the longest. And one of the people that I had wanted to come to, uh, I saw somebody that was like on hold for 50 minutes. I wish I knew which one it was because it looks like it had reset. I guess they might have lost a uh, signal. So it looks like, unfortunately, I have to go with the next person. I'm going to go with caller from the 661 area code. And for those of you, if this is your first time calling into the show, we love that. But do us a favor, let us know your first name, where you're calling from, all right, and proceed. So caller from the 661 area code. You're live on air, my friend. Hello, what's up? Hey, how you doing? That's much. Um, I'm with my friend Nick, and we saw Raw last night. And I'm recently getting the hook to the show. I love your guys' show. It's a great show. Thank you so much. Oh, well, thank you. What, what, what's your name? Thank you. Nick. My name is Nick, and I'm Josh. Nick and Josh. And where are you guys calling from tonight? California. Baker California. California. Love California. All right. So you guys saw Raw. Talk, talk about that. How, how do you guys make you feel? Uh, both of you guys seeing that Jerry Lawler segment there. For the Jerry Lawler segment, I was honestly disgusted by it because my dad does have heart problems. He actually had triple bypass surgery. And the CWWE kind of make fun of that in a way, just kind of it made me sick. I mean, going into that whole thing, I mean, seeing Jerry, seeing Jerry come back, and you know, everybody's all happy, everybody's all hyped up to see him, and then right at the end. You bring in Punk and Heyman, and that right there just made, I mean, I was really just shocked. I seriously, I seriously stood up. I was like, are you kidding me? Why Why would you do a thing like this? Like, it's just, ugh. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hear you guys. Now, other than that, how did you enjoy Raw overall? Uh, Raw was good, actually. Um, you know, the whole thing with uh, Brad Maddox and Ryback, um, you know, seeing uh, seeing uh, Brad Maddox uh, go off with Paul Heyman, you know, that completely threw me off. I was like, oh, all right, so Brad Maddox is obviously going to talk to Paul Heyman, and they're obviously going to plan something like, you know, CM Punk's going to rush down the ring, strike right back somehow, and they're going to – Maddox is even or, – or even go to the angle where they're going to just go hit, hit, attack Brad Maddox and get, and get right back disqualified which that is the angle I thought they were going. But seeing Sid Ryback just absolutely destroy Brad, I was like, oh, wow. Like, that angle completely was, like, threw me off, surprised me, but I thoroughly enjoyed that segment. It was great. Yeah, the match itself with Brad Max and Ryback, I was literally laughing from the minute Maddox came out because all of a sudden I just hear the siren and the was slowly reversing out. I was busting through the whole I was time laughing match. So hard, I was like, oh, a little, little, little bit of humor right there. And then, and then at the end of that, when uh, Ryback was taking Brad Maddox to the ambulance, and before we had seen Ryback flip over Brad Maddox in the stretcher, and then we heard, of course, the King make that funny joke. What, what is Ryback going to do when he throws him in the ambulance? Flip the whole ambulance over? I, I, I was seriously so hysterical. <laughs> it was so hilarious. I was like, oh, my God, leave it to King to make an amazing joke like that at the right time. I seriously, exactly. I seriously think that they're making the Ryback character dumb because after he won the match, he gave the match the new hook. And right after that, he said, I hit hard. I so hit I, hard. Are those going to be his only lines? Finish it, beat me more, beat me back, <laughs> wake up, and I hit hard. <laughs> And I hit hard, yeah. So did so did this Raw hit a home run in you guys' book? Did it get you hyped up for the Survivor Series pay per view? Oh, I'm, I love the ending of it. How they ended the show with Punk with the bib and the meat. Oh yeah, I'm loving that. Seriously, I seriously want to see it. 
Yeah, honestly, if I seriously knew how to do the whole photo editing, I would just go crazy with that because I because I because I think your guys' idea with the whole you know make it into something funny, put a bib on CM Punk and maybe a bob or a rattle, that would seriously be so oh, so so funny. But uh, the whole about thing about sir about about the virus series, actually seeing the Miz like win that poll. And becoming the mem- the last member of Team Bully, I was seriously surprised because I didn't know they would go in that direction. But you know, like hearing the Miz come out, it's like I I'm getting the vibe that they're turning him face. I mean, I don't know if you guys agree with that or not. Do you do you guys believe that the whole thing they do with the Miz? Do you think they're gonna work on turning him face? Honestly, I think that would actually be good timing right now because just think about. What all we've gotten from The Miz thus far. Don't get me wrong. He's been great as a heel. But, Tammy, I, you know, I, I definitely wanted you to chime in a little bit more on this because I know, you know, I ain't trying to go home or anything, but I know I was kind of kicking back, and I'm like watching The Miz come back. I'm like, damn, he's got a Clark Gable distinguished type of look going on here. He don't look like that little – Snot little runny nose dude <laughs> that was you know popping up last we saw with the WWE Championship. He didn't kind of have that whole real world funk to him. He actually looked like a badass wrestler. I mean, he kind of looks like the next guy that could possibly replace Randy Orton. And, and yes, I said that, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I actually mean that in a good way. I. Completely agree. I really think that he is uh, trying or possibly turning face. I mean, you know, he has gotten a brand new look. It's kind of like growing up with with the Miz and his character. You know, he has really uh, is becoming almost a whole different character, even and but being the same person. Yeah, yeah. Now, see, here's the thing. Should it be a? I think the real question is: Should it be a full blown heel, or at this point, can it be done in a way that could kind of mimic The Rock? Because remember, The Rock was just going out there. Stone Cold was just going out there. They were just saying those great liners, and they were just very charismatic. And the fans, you know, they couldn't help but root for them, regardless. You know, is 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 Miz kind of in that position right there where if handled right, you know, heel or face, it's not going to matter. The fans are going to love him either way. Uh, I definitely think that with with what's going on with him now, I think he could absolutely pull that off. Yeah. Um, I mean, because they're doing some of the same same things. They're doing a TV show or, you know, extra skits with him. And, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I absolutely do think. I mean, it it was obvious in the poll that he still has the numbers out there because he won by 60%. And he was thrown at, like, the last freaking minute. Mm -hmm. Unless WWE had, like, a five-minute head start, you know, he he was really put out there at the last freaking minute. And folks just voted away for him. Um, it's kind of funny, too, because, you know, they were going to do this pay-per-view possibly without The Miz, and he's advertising it, he's on the posters, he's everywhere. Mm -hmm. So, you know, kind of funny that they're doing this. Now, some would ask the question, since we're talking about Miz, well, could Dolph Ziggler be a full-blown face? Don't see it happening. I don't see that happening either, just yet. Yeah, I mean, he just works so damn good as a heel. I mean... How would you come up with a different uh, Twitter handle anyway? I mean, his Twitter handle, for Christ's sake, is Hill Ziggler. I mean, he lives and breathes Hill, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I, 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 you know, so those that keep asking, can you, can you see Ziggler go face? No, I can't see him go face. I can see him get hit in the face. I can't see him go face. <laughs> <laughs> okay? <laughs> yeah, right, well, go. you know, I'm sure, I'm sure it will happen sooner or later. Yeah, and for those of you wondering how the WWE Survivor Series card is looking right now, before we take the next caller, um, let me look that up for you guys real quick. I had it up earlier, and I was like, eh, 
this really isn't too much to uh, look at. But so far, it looks like we have about maybe five matches that's on the card. And uh, without a doubt, you can expect more matches to uh, be announced, probably as the uh, pay-per-view is in effect on Sunday. So far, this is the full card for this Sunday. And keep in mind, the SmackDown tapings was tonight. So keep that in mind. This is as follows, and I'm not reading any spoilers here, folks. We got Team Foley, which consists of Kofi Kingston, Team Hell Knows, Kane and Daniel Bryan, Randy Orton, and The Miz. They will take on Team Ziggler, which consists of Dolph Ziggler, Team Rhodes Scholars, Cody Rhodes, Damian Sandow, Alberto Del Rio, and Wade Barrett. That's your one match at Survivor Series. Match two sees Big Show taking on Sheamus for the World Heavyweight Championship. Your third match, CM Punk versus John Cena versus Ryback, triple threat for the WWE Championship. Wouldn't surprise me if Maddox might try to have a little something to do in that match and or Dolph Ziggler try to have a little something to do with that match as well. Um, Eve Torres versus Caitlin for the Divas Championship. And Antonio Cesaro versus R-Truth for the United States Championship. We're missing something here. We're missing a YouTube pre-show. This has to be the second consecutive month now where WWE finds itself in a position now going into a Wednesday that they have not announced what's going to happen for the YouTube pre-show uh, I would hope WWE isn't starting to run out of ideas for what they're going to do at a pre-show. Uh, what is missing from this card? Tammy, guys in the chat room, what is missing from this card for a YouTube pre-show? Who is not making an appearance here? Santino. Santino, Zack Ryder, um, maybe the primetime players. Maybe that could be a, a YouTube pre-show right there. Um, mm-hmm. Well, uh, uh, I mean, let, and right, because let's look at that. Let's look at that. Uh, and I don't mean to spend too much time, folks. I'm, I'm just it just kind of rattles me here. Let, let's look at this here. We got the World Heavyweight Championship, the WWE Championship. That's making an appearance. We got the United States Championship. That's making an appearance. The Divas Championship is making an appearance. That Intercontinental Championship. It's not making an appearance. Because I don't, I Kofi Kingston, right? Because Kofi Kingston is on Team Foley. You can either do a YouTube tag match. Um, it could be a non-title tag match, or you could do a YouTube pre-show for the tag. Well, no, you can't do that either, because you got Kane and Daniel Bryan. No, because they're in on Team Foley. What the hell is going to be the pre-show? Well, I think it's not a case of they're running out of ideas. I, I really think it's more of we're not going to tell you because we want you to watch. I don't know. It just seemed like there used to be a time where the YouTube pre-show was really generating a lot of buzz because, you know, you would know what all you could expect. You know, by now, and I think those of you in the chat room, those of you that's listening, you guys would agree that by now – they would have announced what's going to be happening for the YouTube pre-show. And, God, I would hope we don't see another lame-ass Q&A because, really, that last one from Hell in a Cell, I really could have just done without that. If I wanted to hear somebody talk, I could have just turned on a infomercial or hear somebody's sermon for real. Let's go to our next caller. Uh, let's go to our good friend, Homie, in the San Antonio area. Homie, you live on the air, my friend. Hey, what's up, D? Hey, bro, how you been? I can't complain. Uh, I'm thinking maybe uh, for the pre-show, it's going to probably be that lame-ass one-man band versus Santino and Zack Ryder. Oh, Lord. Just got a feeling. Anyways, um, I, I heard you were talking about WrestleMania. I don't know if you saw over the weekend that they sold 55,000 tickets for WrestleMania and grossed about $10 million just over that one weekend. Wow, just $10 million? Yeah. All right, well, they got $90 million more to make up. <laughs> yeah. You know, with all that heart attack uh, stuff, I know I feel what you're saying, but, you know, when people want the PG era to end, you know, the Attitude Era, 
they didn't code around that stuff when I used to watch it when I was little. And, you know, I, you know, with the Katie Vick and you know all that stuff. You know, it used to be just as bad as what they did last night. So I mean, if people want the PC era to end, that's what you got to look look ahead of. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I mean, there's no denying that. You know, I mean, of course, there's that hardcore audience that wants for that attitude era to come back. And I mean, at this point, there's probably a bit of a divide. You probably got those that have maybe grew up watching WWE. They got kids now. They're probably saying, you know what? I want my kids to enjoy what I used to watch as a kid, but I don't want them seeing all the the violent stuff, the the degrading stuff that I used to watch in the Attitude Era. I want them to see the clean, PG-friendly type of stuff, you know, as opposed to those other wrestling fans. You know, we got to see them go back. They've lost their stroke. They need to go back to the glory days. And, you know, the whole argument of that, you know, what they really got to think of is, see, this is probably one of the main reasons why, unfortunately, homie, WWE might not go back to that type of era and change their TV rating is because all those sponsors that they have now, you know, just think about that for a second. If it was the early 90s or mid-90s, whatever, late 90s, you wouldn't see WWE doing business with the Susan G. Komen Foundation. You wouldn't see them doing things with the troops. There would be so many people that would just be so far away from them, sponsorships and all. It would be freaking ridiculous. Nobody would want to touch it. But now that you've shaped up the image a little bit, you know, I have a funny analogy. You know what WWE reminds me of when I think about the Attitude Era and I think about how it is now, it reminds me of a person that went to prison for committing a heinous act. They served their time. They read their Bible. They reshaped their image, and they were, uh, you know, did their time. They go out. They're a changed man, and they're trying to live a good life. They're trying to live that good, straight, narrow path. That's kind of what WWE reminds me of. And, you know, what's really tasteless, and this is the thing I want for everybody to understand, it's not that, okay, what they did, well, you know, if we had the Attitude Era, you know, this is exactly what we would be getting. There's no denying that. The problem right now is that they have that PG rating. And if you are that 30-plus-year-old that has that kid, and you're like, okay, Enjoy your wrestling, and WWE is taking all those casual precautions that they are doing. Please, don't try this at home. Then when you turn on their WWE Saturday Morning Slam, the wrestlers are wrestling in a way where they are not applying headlocks or any type of moves that would end up in a situation where kids would try to emulate it in real life, and then the next thing you know, you read a poor headline in the papers, Tammy, boy kills kid after watching WWE, applies Crippler Crossface. Remember how many headlines we had used to read of those back in the day, and it was like, God mm-hmm. damn. You know? So, you know, you really got to think about what's happening right now with this whole PG-rated thing that's happening. You know, if WWE wants to go to that path, they want to go back, then they're going to need to do something with the rating. You know, and quite honestly, quite simply put, here's what I don't understand. There used to be a TV show called Homicide, Life in the Street, and uh, it was very popular here in the metropolitan area. And one of the things that I had liked about the show, as well as a few other shows, they kept switching up the TV rating. One minute you would get TV rated, whatever, basically letting you know it was going to be strong language. And then, you know, the next episode, you know, they would change the rating because, you know, in general, anybody could watch it. Same thing with NYPD Blue. One minute, you know, okay, this week the episode is going to be rated blah, 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 strong use of language. But then the next week you turn to NYPD Blue, the rating has moved up because they're going to show a nude scene. 
Why doesn't mm-hmm. WWE just emulate something like that? Okay, this week we're going to be PG. Well, you know, we really need to push. Okay, well, let's change the rating. Why don't we be TV rated 14? I don't understand why they don't do that. That way, if they want to kind of flirt with those Attitude Era storylines, at least they can be like, you know what? What were you expecting? We told you guys it was going to be rated this. We gave you parental guidance as suggested. We told you that this segment was about to have strong use of language. Maybe going forward, that's actually something WWE might want to consider. It might be kind of a consider of a spoiler alert, Tammy. Like, can you just imagine if you were watching Raw this past Monday night, how badass that would have been to see some type of a disclaimer pop up right before they introduce Jerry Lawler and say the following segment, you know, may contain use of strong language, blah blah blah, that's deemed too sensible for viewers, you know, um if you're blah blah blah, you know, Blah, 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 advice, you know? And I know I'm going with the blah, blah, blahs, but you know exactly what I'm saying. I, I don't know. Tammy, what do you think about that? I've been running my damn mouth. What do you think of that? Well, honestly, you know, I, I definitely agree with changing the ratings at, depending on what, you know, what night or what you're having on for that night. Now, two, two things come into mind. One is then you get rid of the PG part for just that one night or however, you might lose sponsors, you know, because especially depending on mm-hmm. what they are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Secondly, is even if you did change it, unfortunately, I still find some of that um, of what was done so tasteless that it doesn't matter what you label it. You know, just like you know, one of our our, our the callers from California. I mean, his dad, how close to home does that hit? His dad has heart problems. So, yeah, for some of our, their viewers, it's going to hit real close to home, whether it's them or somebody they know. Tammy, Tammy, you and our, and our good friends, I believe it was Chris. I know it was Chris, and I believe the other one was Josh. If I have that, mm-hmm. if I, have the name, I might have the names mixed up, but I'm pretty sure I heard those names right. Um, you know, I just got a brainstorm in my head. He was talking about his dad and all. What is one of the main reasons why, folks, we watch programs like WWE, um, you know, your favorite episode of Power Rangers or um, Attack of the Show? You know, why do you watch your favorite shows, folks? I mean, honestly. No, 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 no. Hang, hang on, hang on. Why do you watch your favorite shows? There's one major thing, one major reason. You watch your favorite shows to just for a brief moment in time forget about whatever problems you're having in your personal life. And unfortunately, when you see stuff like that that we saw, you know, like our loyal listeners there in California say, you know, okay, you know, that was kind of hitting close to home. That was my dad. You know, you don't really want to see that when you're watching. Hmm. You know your favorite show. Mm-hmm. You're supposed to escape from re- from reality for that brief little moment. You know you, you shouldn't always be reminded of it. Let's go a couple of months back. Look at that controversial storyline with Chris Jericho, CM Punk, Jericho telling Punk he's going to make him be an alcoholic. He's going to have him uh, 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 go to the bottle just like his fucked up family, and it is now past. 1230, I can get away with the F-bombs now, you know, telling him how, you know, he was going to be as sorry as his mother, his father, or drunk, just like his father, and, you know, for a lot of people, it was just too much for them, because it reminded them in some shape or form of what was happening, either in their household, somebody they knew, you know, uh, or a past life, they, you know, they, too close to home, and it's like, you know, you gotta you gotta separate stuff like that, and I think what you said makes perfect sense. Even if you were to change the TV rating, you're still gonna deal with some type of a backlash unless you just go full throttle and say, you know what, this is what we want to do, you know, and this is how we're gonna do it. I don't know, I don't know. I know one thing: WWE, as far as them trying to get that whole network thing. 
looks like that's not happening. Now, for those of you that might have missed that little bit of news, uh, before we take the next caller, uh, WWE is now going to be one of those subscription type of channels. They were trying to have their own little network. Looks like they weren't able to get enough support. Now they're going to kind of be set up just like HBO, Showtime. So basically you get your little cable, you know, you picking your packages, WWE is going to be one of the options. So you're going to kind of be like, well, do I want to pay 10 11 Price hasn't even been determined, so it could be a hell of a lot more than that. But the question is going to be, do you want to pay $10, $11 a month extra to have the WWE, you know? Well, I mean, honestly, you know, from what I saw from the WWE channel that was being shown, would you really want to pay the extra for not very much that you were getting that you'd actually want to pay the extra for. You know, I mean, it was rehashed or some kind of somebody talking about this, that, or the other that really wasn't re- wasn't that relevant, you know, and it was kind of like, okay, well, uh, next, you know, wasn't something that you felt that it was worth it. I agree. I, I, I agree. I agree 100%. Um, I want to go to our next caller. I think this might be somebody calling us from Skype. I'm not sure. Um, for those of you that do happen to access the show and you got Skype open, you know you can interact with us through there as well. You can hit us up at the RCWR show on Skype. Um, let's go to this caller right now. Caller, let me know where your uh, your first name and let me know where you're calling from, and then proceed, my friend. You're live on the air. Hi, I'm I'm David, and I'm calling from Washington. Oh, hey, Dave, how you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty well, thank you. I'm a huge fan of wrestling, and I'm actually a, a amateur wrestler myself. Okay, well, what did you think about WWE Raw tonight? Uh, last night? Oh, I loved it. The guys are really fighting hard, and I wanted to ask a few questions about um, some wrestling. Um, I was I was thinking you guys could help a bit. Well, what's your question? Uh, well, since I'm still an amateur wrestler... Um, I okay, to... you're just being cute, and I don't have time for that shit. When you're real, you're welcome to call who I'm back. Let's go with our good friend Dave from the Michigan area. Dave, you're live, my friend. Yeah, what the hell is up with that? <laughs> I don't know, but uh, as, Alec Bird, as Alec Baldwin said on SNL, <laughs> you got... What's up, Dave? How you been, man? Oh, hey, I've been good. I mean, how you guys doing? Good show tonight. Uh, good. Yeah, good. I mean, I like how you, you did the um uh, the band thing. Will you guys be doing that future? Like maybe some young bands in the future, maybe. We're thinking about it. You know, you know, you know we kind of did that a few times. We're kind of playing around a little bit, and uh, I don't know. I think we might have some plans for 2013. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, it seemed cool. You know, and, and it's think, not, and it's not wrestling. It's not, yeah. you know, it, it's it's not ignorant. You know, you just make yourself sound like a dumbass when you come on here. I'm an amateur wrestler. I want to ask you about wrestling. You know, it's hey, I have a question. You know, since we're talking wrestling, I want to talk about. You know, come correct. Don't be fucking cute, because if you try to be cute, I'm gonna carry your ass. That's just how it goes. I think he was one of those guys who were just calling to make fun of the wrestling fans. Yeah, yeah, and and please don't hit us up with that lame ass, sorry ass bullshit line. Wrestling is fake. Oh, don't you guys know? Thank yes, you. we know. It's called sports entertainment. We know that the winners, the losers, have already been predetermined. Thank you. I, I go stage, but I don't go fake. <laughs> So, Dave, let's get your take on this, man. You saw that episode of Raw. We got to pick your brain. What did you think about that Dre Lawler segment? I mean, I was more shocked. I rewatched it again with my girlfriend, and she, her jaw dropped, too. Not just about the CM Punk part, but the fact that they re showed him getting shocked on TV. He was literally getting shocked. Mm-hmm. I mean, to show that, I mean, they didn't do that when that happened to Owen Hart. Yeah. 
I mean, they would have. They're still involved in lawsuits, I believe, over that. They are. Wow. Yeah. They are. Yeah. Wow. I mean, what was that? What was that? Ninety-seven, ninety-eight. Yeah. I just. I mean, that should tell you right there that you shouldn't have done it again. Yeah. I know, but to me, and if you watched it, uh, I've watched it a few times. Jim Ross's face just looked like he was not happy being a part of that. Mm-mm. You could, he just looked like, man, he did not, wasn't smiling or looking at the camera or nothing. Like, he did not want to even have nothing to do with this. When they were getting ready to show that clip. Like, I haven't I even heard, heard him comment on that, uh, on that segment yet, have you? No. But I know Jerry, usually, I, read that. I was going to say, I know usually he takes to Twitter and his blog, and he usually talks about, you know, whatever. He, he's been quiet about that segment. Yeah, and I noticed that. I heard read that Jerry Jarrett thing earlier today, too, because I want to see what was going on on the news after last night. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, I was like, I just can't believe they would. Actually, I was shocked they went there. Mm-hmm. But it's funny. Would they have done this if they were? If this was still October? Would they have went there still if, they, if he would have been back in time? That would have been interesting mm-hmm. if this would have happened a few months ago. Yeah, and yeah, I was thinking the same thing. What he said in that little interview or release he gave about yeah, Linda McMahon really wants to be a senator. Like, good luck with stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. The only way and she's really, really going to have a shot at this point is to divorce Vince, and uh, you know, I don't see that happening. <laughs> I don't see that yeah, happening, I mean, and, and unfortunately, the uh, persona is going to precede her. Yeah, she's always going to yeah, be. Affiliated. That picture is still so funny, though, of Vince McMahon in that photo. Which it's just funny, just that look on his face. Oh yeah, when Linda lost. <laughs> yeah, that look is like, so funny. <laughs> he he had a look on his face like I'm gonna kill her. I'm gonna kill her. Damn it! I'm gonna kill her with my grapefruits. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I can just ima- can you just imagine Vince McMahon? He's gonna he's gonna do like one of those ID channel shows. I almost got away with it. I can see him now. He's, he's gonna call up Hunter. Hunter, listen, you and me, the bitch gotta go. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> that, that, what's that line, what's that? McMahon? Like? That, that show on ID behind uh, Madison Walls. <laughs> What'd you say? I said that show on ID that has uh, behind mansion walls or something. So yeah, there you go, behind mansion walls. I'll take that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, 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 Dave, how how did Raw do for you? Did it sell you for the Survivor Series pay per view? I mean, not really the pay per view. I thought it was a good Raw. I guess. I mean, those tag matches, like you said, were really. I mean, that Mysterio and then Eight Man Tag was really an awesome tag match. Mm-hmm. Because it was like, wow, when's the last time you actually seen some kind of, like, really good tag team wrestling like that? Yeah, yeah. It's phenomenal, yeah. Yeah, but I look at the card, and it's like, man, really, that's the card? I mean, it lo- really doesn't look that good. It doesn't. It doesn't, yeah. I mean, if they could take out the tag, if they had the tag titles on the line and the Intercontinental title on the line, they'd make it look a lot better. Mm-hmm, Yeah. And then you could have the U.S. and the U.S. champion. I'm, it just it feels wrong, though, honestly. Antonio, I like Antonio Cesaro, but for him to be on the pay per view against Our Truth, it just doesn't really seem right. Seems out of place. It it, it really does. It, it really does because it's like you look at that and you're like, okay, there's really not that much of uh, a storyline you can really sink your teeth into to feel invested in the match. You know, it's like mm-hmm. something that was just thrown up, you know, thrown together at the last minute. I was about to say throw up. I might as well put that out there, too, because I, I really I, I don't really care for this particular match, and quite honestly, I don't want to see R-Truth going backwards. I want to see him kind of go forward there, and uh, it's kind of sad because uh, I'm sure you heard about the same thing, too. Um, uh, Truth wants to go back to being heel, but well, Vince McMahon yeah, likes like this whole little Jimmy thing. This thing's getting old. He was at his best. 
I mean, if you go back and watch that, what, 2011 of Raw, Best of Raw on Netflix, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and just watching our truth on there as a heel was so freaking hilarious. I mean, it, it was, was one of the, some of the funniest stuff you've ever seen. It was. It was. It makes you wonder. I, I ain't trying to pull the race car, but it makes you wonder the fact that they gave him the ball and he did so damn good with it, you know. Did, did, did Vince McMahon kind of kind of sit up and say to himself, God damn it, he wasn't supposed to go that far. Only Bobby Lashley can. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? It, I mean, it really makes you wonder, you know? Because it's like he was like almost right up there with John Cena, and then it was Coffee, like, oh, yeah. you know, you know, it was like, oh, no, 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 put him back down, put him back down, and then he just starts coming up with this whole spiders and little Jimmy. I'm like, okay. Mm-hmm. I don't oh, know yeah, that whole. You remember that panel they did on Raw for the elimination? I think it was Elimination Chamber or something they were all doing in. That was his great one. Of his great moments. Yeah, right about, yeah. Yeah, I know. And then I don't want these spiders on the ladders and stuff. And I was like, man. Now, now, correct me if I'm wrong, Dave, but didn't um, wasn't AJ referring to a John? But it's not the John Cena. That it's not John Cena that we're thinking of because well, we're hearing these reports that AJ did leave a message for a John, but it wasn't John Cena. What if it was her dad or his dad? What if it was John Morrison? Yeah, Ooh, well, I doubt that. Probably. He's gone. I'd, yeah. I'd see more like John Cena Sr. That'd be interesting if that's who the voice was being left for. Oh, God. I, 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 mm-hmm. I I don't know. And what do you think about that phone call? Which if, one? If oh, oh, AJ's? Yeah, if that wasn't TNA all over again, I don't know what was. It's like every week. Mm-hmm. One thing that jumped out at me about Raw this past Monday night, and, you know, I got to give a props to the production crew because the way that they retold what had happened last week, you know, it's something that WWE really hadn't been too keen on, um, as far as I can remember, you know, it was nice of them, the way that they opened it up, they did that recap, you're like, oh, it's kind of got a TNA vibe to it, previously on Raw, you know, you're like, okay, cool, and then to see them pull another playbook, a, a, a page out of TNA's playbook, that is, you know, you're doing the voicemails, it's like, okay, what are you going to do now, you know, what's 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 next? You know, I kept waiting to hear John start talking on there, too, I swear they're going to do something like that. You know, I want to say this. I wonder if the Survivor Series pay-per-view could have done better if maybe, and, and see, I definitely... I know where you're going. I, you know what I'm saying? I wonder if it would have done better if it would have been Cena versus Ziggler and yes. you just have Ryback take on uh, CM Punk with Mick Foley as the special guest referee and, you know, you could have did some type of a scenario there where unintentionally Mick Foley could have cost Ryback a shot at winning the WWE Championship. Now, I have a question for you. I agree with that. Okay. I was talking to my stepdad last night about this. I was like, Ziggler, Team Ziggler versus Team Foley, it has no heat at all. No steam or nothing behind that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm sitting there thinking, like, why would anybody be invested into this match now? They didn't even do a promo with Ziggler and Foley at all last night anyway. Mm-hmm. I mean, the whole heat was behind Punk and Foley. That was it. And I was like, mm-hmm. why isn't Ziggler doing something with Mick Foley right now? Or why wasn't a Ziggler coming out there cutting something on Lawler? Yeah. I didn't want to see anybody do it, but if they were going to go there, they might as well have used Ziggler to help for the steam. I agree with that. I agree with that 100%. But I think what the problem is, you know, WWE, they listen to the fans, but they really didn't put too much more of a thought process into it. They heard the initial buzz that that Team CM Punk and Team Mick Foley was getting, Tammy, and they were like, okay, nah, Survivor Series, it sucks. Now you shake it up, you pull Punk from that main event, and you now have him defending the championship. But, you know, Tammy, what does that say about Ryback? 
you know, right back just a month prior, he had a pretty strong performance against CM Punk in that Hell in a Cell match. But now here you have a situation here where, it, you know, it really looks kind of bad for Ryback. It kind of comes off to me, I don't know about you, but it kind of comes off to me as if WWE is kind of saying we don't really trust Ryback one-on-one in just a straight-up pay-per-view match because he's going to fuck up. Uh, yeah, that's exactly what it it's saying. You know, at least to me, I get the same vibe you do. You know, at this point, okay, so you're not going to give it to him straight away because you're going to have a referee basically inter- interrupt and say, uh, or I'm sorry, not interrupt, but basically, you know, go have the match go another way because of your own personal, you know, um, something or another in that match. But then you're also going to say, okay, I'm going to put Cena in this match with Ryback and Punk just as, you know, either one of two, one, that either we don't trust you to be able to bring, or two, it's John Cena and he's our biggest. I don't, I, you know, I agree with you guys. You know, I really, I look at the card, and that's why I was talking about it earlier. I'm like, this card looks so off. I really feel that, you know, if I was booking this, like I said, it should have been CM Punk versus Ryback, Mick Foley as the referee, perfect freaking angle. You know, we could have seen a segment where Mick Foley, he could have caught up with Vince McMahon in our backstage area, or maybe he could have been talking to him over the phone, and, you know, this actually could have been something that could have maybe happened last week, you know, maybe Vince could have been talking on the phone with Foley saying, look, I know, yeah, you know, but, you know, what what happened initially, you know, the match kind of sucked, it looked like it needed to be shaken up a little bit, you want to see me next week, in the middle of my ring, you want to see me next week. Well, okay, I'll see you next week. And you know, and Mick Foley, you know, he, you know, that could have been the perfect setup right there, rather than see this controversial stuff that had happened there with CM Punk and Jerry Lawler. But if they were going to go that route, so be it. But you could have saved it there. You could have been like, you know, have Foley tell McMahon, look, you know, I understand, you know, this is your company. You want to change matches? Hey, that's fine. But you know, hey, I want to teach. CM Punk a lesson so bad And Vince McMahon could have been like Well you know what you want to teach him a lesson so bad Well I'll tell you what How about we make you be a special referee And uh, you can referee Right back Versus CM Punk You gotta call it down the middle But just think about this If right back wins you get the satisfaction Of counting one two three And crowning a new WWE champion And basically laying claim to being the one That in part calls CM Punk is WWE Championship. Meanwhile, you go to John Cena, who had already built some type of a good program with Dolph Ziggler. They could have been going head-to-head at this Sunday's pay-per-view, and pretty much you could have kept everything else on the card, and guess what? You would have had a solid pay-per-view. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to see what happens. I hope they have some curveballs and at least two or three surprise matches that's going to pop up. I'm hearing rumblings that a certain WWE Hall of Famer might pop up. I don't know if he can save the pay-per-view because his last performance on Raw, honestly, it sucked. Um... I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to even say his name because, you know, I don't want to say his name and then it turns out I'm wrong. But if he's actually going to be popping up at the pay-per-view, I hope they can just let him run loose. You know, if you really want to know, I'm getting rumblings that Roddy Piper might show up at Survivor Series. I don't know. I Really, if he does, it's not going to mean anything unless they just take the shackles off of him and they just let him Run with it. I mean, this is pay-per-view. You can get away with a lot more stuff, you know, than on the USA Network. So if he is going to pop up, then let him go the whole nine yards. Otherwise, what's the point of having him pop up? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, quite honestly, I hope it doesn't happen, but it is what it is. 
Damn it, we had a very solid fucking show tonight, man. Um, damn good show. Probably one of the best we put out. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I like it. I like it. Thoughts? No, I mean, you know, honestly, I think we covered on some really good topics, and I really think it was a good show. Yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a damn good show. We we did pretty good tonight. Um, we pretty much covered all bases in wrestling related news. I know two quick notes that uh jumped out there at me in the, uh, off the top of my head that I'll share with you guys real quick. Awesome Kong is getting ready to make her triumphant wrestling return. She's going to be doing something with the Shimmer promotion. She's got something going on this Friday, and then Saturday she's going to be taking on uh, ECW Original and two-time WWF Women's Champion Jazz. Now you guys remember her. Uh, that should be phenomenal. Of course, Awesome Kong coming back um, in the wrestling after giving birth to a stillborn. Uh, what was that last year? Nice to really see her finally get back on the saddle again. Glad that she's back in wrestling, even if it is on the independent circuit. It's nice that she's getting back into it. And, uh, of course, we wish her nothing but the best over here. Um, Other wrestling-related news that kind of jumped out there at me this week. um, I know SmackDown ratings are in. Uh, For those of you that were curious how SmackDown had did, um, I know they had pulled in for their replay a 1.43 rating with, 2.16 2.16 million viewers The uh, initial Live airing It did better than that It did a 1.52 rating With 2.202 million viewers So pretty uh, solid right there Of course overall when you think about it It actually did poorly From Smackdown from last Friday As that episode It actually had scored I believe a one point. 94 rating or something like that So not really too good For the Smackdown ratings uh, From this past Friday But other than that folks That's pretty much it for uh, wrestling news headlines Not really too much else is uh, out there uh, Right now Kind of a quiet week We do hope you had enjoyed tonight's show We had a ton of great people that called into the show Uh, We want to thank Chris uh, Josh I hope we got uh, I know I heard Chris Hopefully I heard the name Josh Wright, too, but they know who they are, our guys from uh, California that have been listening to all the shows. We appreciate it. Of course, we want to thank Homie for calling in. We want to thank Dave for calling in and uh, all of you for that participated in the chat room tonight. Uh, Gigantic, appreciate you checking out the show. I love TNA, as always. Dave doing a little double duty in the chat room in there as well. We appreciate that, as always. Guest that might have just popped up Just check out the show Hopefully you had a good time One more time We want to extend A heartfelt thank you To um, you all For checking out Our coverage Of the WWE um, Not the WWE I got my daggone shows Mixed up Um, The TNA coverage That we had did For Turning Point Y'all had checked out Our Call That Match special And our post show And you made those two Be our quickly Most listened to And downloaded episodes We really appreciate That love and support We're going to do this again this Thursday night for Impact Showdown Radio at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern immediately after Impact Wrestling Live. Do join us. For you guys that are just strictly WWE fans, then you want to make sure you check out the RCWR show this Saturday afternoon at 2 o'clock p.m. in the afternoon uh, as we're going to be offering match predictions for this Sunday's Survivor Series pay-per-view for the lovely co-producer Tammy. Really appreciate you helping me out on this episode. I am, of course, as always, the Black Avenger, Lee Sanders. Make sure that you subscribe to us in the iTunes Zoom marketplaces using the keywords, the RCWR Show. Befriend us on Twitter at Infinity One Prod. Hit us up on Facebook at Infinity One Productions. And, of course, for all the latest and wrestling-related news, so much more, check out our website at infinityoneproductions.com. Till we hear from you all this Thursday night for Impact Showdown Radio, 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern, you all be safe and kind to one another, folks. We'll see you. Do take care. Good night, everyone.